Now let's move on to the next topic. How to set absolute positioning and transform a control by moving it, resizing it, rotating it, and so on. Let's suppose, for example, that when viewing a speaker's details, we want his full name to be displayed above the photo and not below it, as we can see in the screen on the left. That is to say, we will have to overlap the speaker full name attribute control with the speaker image image control. To do so, we need to define a container of controls with absolute positioning. This container is very similar to a table, but has a special name, canvas. When a canvas control is included in the layout, all the controls inserted within it will have absolute positioning regarding the canvas's borders. So, if we insert this control, we will have to set the distance from the upper margin, top, the control's height, height, and the distance from the lower margin, bottom. When two of these measurements are adjusted, the third one is automatically set, giving the canvas a certain height. In addition, we need to set the distance from the left margin, left, the control's width, width, and the distance from the right margin, right. When these measurements are conveniently assigned, we will be able to overlap the controls. Therefore, we will also need to assign a value to axis Z, which will determine each control's layer so as to know which ones will be on top and which ones will be below them. This property, called Z order, will take discrete values. Zero will be the layer at the bottom, one the next one, and so on. If we're using the Android platform, this is a particular case. There are controls inside the canvas with the elevation properties set and also with Z order, obviously because they are inside a canvas. The difference between the depths of two controls with the same Z order will be determined by their elevation property. Here, we have a way to distinguish them. We open Genexus to do what was shown in the previous slide. Also, I will show how a speaker's details are displayed now before doing anything. As we can see, his full name is displayed below the photo. Here we see the layout. The photo will fit a row of, this is shown in the properties, 160 dips. So we will insert a canvas control. First, I will move this down to insert it in the 160 dip row. I open the toolbox and drag the canvas control to that row. If we open the properties and edit the control, we see that it reads canvas, but also that the control's name is table one. That's why it will be like a table, except for the feature that allows absolute positioning. So much so that it can be converted into a table. Now it reads table. We can also convert the table into a canvas. Good. Now we will do the following. First of all, we drag the image inside that canvas table and see that after doing it, if we edit the image properties, this absolute position group is displayed with all the properties we had seen before. Top, left, bottom, right, width, height, and Z order. By setting these properties, we will be able to indicate where it will be placed, where this image will begin. That is to say, its relative position in relation to the canvas borders. For example, we want the image to take the entire width, as we saw in the emulator. We're using live editing. That's why this change is being displayed in this way. We haven't finished yet. The width will be the entire row's width. From the canvas top border, we set it at 10 dip. From the left at zero dip because we want it to take the entire width as we were saying the same on the right zero dip we leave the width at hundred percent of the total width so that it expands across the entire row we want the height to be 150 dip
Because 150 plus 10 gives 160, which was the height of the entire row, in this way, with this height, we see that bottom was left with 100%, but 100% of 0 will be 0. That is to say, it will be at the bottom of the canvas. Good. We leave Z order set to 0 because we will want the image to be at the back. Now we need to drag the speaker full name attribute. As we can see, it doesn't have the absolute position group because it's outside the canvas. Now, when we drag it to the canvas, we will see that this group is displayed. Again, we will have to indicate the absolute position that this control will take. We set this control's height at 30 dip. So, we go down here and enter 30 dip. This will be the height of this control. But since the height is 30, and we want it to be next to the bottom of the canvas, how far will it be from the top? The answer is 130, because 130 plus 30 gives 160, which is the row's height. So here I enter 130. Next, from the left, it'll be zero dip because we will also want it to take exactly the same width as the image, zero from the left and zero from the right. The width will be 100%, and again the bottom is 100%. However, for the bottom, 100% of zero, because 130 plus 30 already gives 160, so it'll be zero dip downwards, will be zero. Here, what matters is that the Z order will have to be higher than that of the image because we want the attribute to be on top, so I enter 1. In the emulator, we see that it's shown as we wanted. I can also change the attributes class. We've created a new class in the theme below this other one, a class that we've called in this way which we've set as four color brand color. In addition, we've added a background color with transparency. So we will see what happens when I replace the control class with this new one. We will show that it's displayed with a blurred white and the background is a bit visible. We can also set this attribute to be aligned to the right, for example. Vertical alignment can be set to middle, but here we won't notice the difference. Something is wrong here in the table, and it's caused by the adjustments we've made. If we edit the table's properties, we can see that this 10-dip setting is causing trouble. We set it to PD platform default. Now everything is in the right order. This is how easily we've implemented absolute positioning.